Alrighty, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Tyler Creates YouTube channel. Hope y'all are having a blessed day. In today's video, we are going to be working on the 1993? 6? 1996? 1993? I can't remember. Craftsman GT6000 garden tractor. Uh, today we're going to be putting piston rings in one side. I already did piston rings on the driver's side because I wanted to do it so I knew what I was doing. Um, and I believe that I know pretty well what I'm doing, I think. Uh, I've seemed to do a little bit of research on it and uh, called the company up that I ordered them from, got the spec on what they're supposed to be, all that good jazz. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get this other side in. I'm going to show you guys it. Throw all the parts back on and then fire it up. And then in the next episode, hopefully we will get like a new tire on it and get the deck sorted and get it like finished. But for this episode, we got to get the engine back together. So i uh, got the 77 in the background there. Uh, but uh, yeah, other than that, let's get right into it. Holy blown out master. All right, everyone, we're over here on the passenger side, piston head. I already took all the bolts out. There's six bolts, two exhaust, which mine were rusty and I had to like make a notch for a screwdriver. Anyways, uh, we should be able to just take this right off. Ta-da! All right, I got you guys off the tripod here. I don't actually know if I've ever shown the inside of this. I didn't, I don't think I did, but here's your piston. Um, the whole issue with these is, is these rings are worn out. They got like either prematurely worn out or something's wrong with them. Uh, they're burning oil and they're leaking and I think they're quite out of spec. So, uh, but your piston, you got your wrist pin with retainer in there, connecting rod, these are not bearing connecting rods and then like down inside there you got you got like uh, your cams right there with your valves and uh, you got casting stuff down in there but this is what spins around so it goes like this and this is what drives this this would be an opposed twin versus a V twin or a single um, these motors also, I believe, are generator motors, so they can be mounted, I think, like, flat or something. But we're going to go ahead and get this off. I want to make sure you don't lose that clip in there, uh, and then we'll take this off. All you have to do is take the top clip out for these guys, uh, and then you push from the bottom, and the wrist pin slides out, and then the piston comes off. I think the compression rings are fine, but it's the oil wiper rings that are worn out. So, obviously, because it leaks oil. If you sit, let it sit and then look in the piston, like if you were to have this whole thing on and look in the cylinder, the piston will leak right here on the bottom of the cylinder will have oil in it and it smoked real bad. So I already did that side, this side's all back together. Uh, Connecting rod. Yeah, this motor's got very low hours, or it's been rebuilt. Alrighty, everybody. So, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is pop this wrist pin out of here. If I can get it. There we go. That comes out like that. Uh, this clip just stays in here because it's in a groove. I'm gonna wipe the piston off. Come on. Get that sucker off there. Ta da, there's that. These guys are pretty worn out. They're different sizes from end to end. These, these rings are not in great shape. What I forgot to do on the last one, which I'm going to do on this one, is I want to see how far out they are. Pull it up. I mean, it's barely in there, too. Yeah, so. Um, as you can see, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, don't what, I don't know what happened to this, my poor motor, but, uh, that, that, uh, that compression ring is a little gap too much. That's supposed to be 17 thousandths, which is, uh, well, let's find 17 thousandths. 
Let's see here. Six thousand eight. <laughs> Stinking bug. So this is what that gap should be. Um, Seventeen. Obviously, more like a fourth of an inch or an eighth. So definitely junk. Uh, wow. You can see even the ends are worn at a different height one side to the other. Who knows how that happened. But uh, way, way out of spec. So. Just to give you guys a comparison as to how it's supposed to fit. So you can obviously tell there's uh, there's some variation there. That's what it's roughly supposed to be and that's what it was. So yeah, uh, definitely like definitely worn out. <laughs> wow, that's bad. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take these other rings off. This is gonna be your scraper ring right here. Obviously something was wrong with these to be so worn out. Again, super gapped. This guy also has a little, oh, these have little holes in them. That's kind of weird. I don't know why they'd have holes in them. They're the same top and bottom, so. Don't know about that, but because there's no variation in size. Yeah, I don't, that's weird. Um, and there's no, there's no dimple in the ring land. I think that's what you call those. So let's get one of these oil rings off. The oil rings are really bad. Um, I don't, the oil rings, I don't even think. Yeah, look at that doesn't even fit in there so it's like that's an old oil ring this is a new oil ring let's see yeah, new one you can hear it fit better and these might be collapsed a little bit yeah that fits way better to slide in and out this piston is kind of loose, it's not bad. The other one was, I think, about like that, actually. So what we're gonna do is stick this in here. I'm shooting for 17 thousandths on the ring gap. Uh, I think it's between 10 and 23. So what I'll do is press it down like that. Make sure it's relatively even from the top down to the ring. I'll take my gapping tool Okay, so we're not quite at 17. What I'm gonna do is push it down in the cylinder bore, see how much variance there is. So it gets smaller the further down it goes, so it's gonna need a little bit bigger of a gap. So more like 17 and a half, that way at the bottom of the cylinder it's actually 17. Always, if you're going to over gap by a half a thousandth or whatever, because what you don't want happening is the rings heating up and these ends contacting because when these ends contact it swells and can do really bad things basically catastrophic engine failure can happen when you uh undersize a ring gap so i want to make sure they're sized a little over to be on the safe side under bad things can happen over i mean unless you went way 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 over your compression would be fine so uh, i'm shooting for 17. so i'm gonna take these in and show you guys how i do that all right, everybody, we are here in the shop. Got a sanding wheel here with 120 on it. What we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna go tap, 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 and uh, then check it. What you don't wanna do is tap it at like an angle like that. I wanna make sure the ring face here where my nail is stays that shape, so. As you can tell here, if you can see it, that side of the ring's colored black. That side now has color on it. So take this out and remeasure. Alrighty, got the ring here. So now we're gonna stick it in here. We're gonna take this, level it out. 
We're gonna take our gauge. Okay, at the top it is 17. The ring gap's basically about there. It's a little tight. Uh, sometimes what can happen is if you pull your um, feeler gauge out like this and it's too tight, it can go like that and pull it up and then it makes it not accurate. So you wanna make sure that it's centered in there and then test it. So that's a little tight. We're gonna shove it further down the cylinder. It's real tight, no longer 17. And we'll show it down a little bit more. So it's not 17 down there. Now you have to remember that the compression ring does not see as much as the, it sees a different part of the cylinder compared to the oil, oil wiping rings. The oil wiping rings see way down in here, whereas the compression ring sees further up the bore. Uh, it doesn't go all the way down because it sits higher on the piston where as the oil scraping rings sit in a different spot. So I'm gonna go do the same thing, except this time I'm probably just gonna hit it with one tap. Uh, they do make uh, hand drive stones where you can take this and spin a little wheel and there's a little grinding stone that's specifically for rings when you want to get them really accurate. Um, or you can use a file, but with a file you got to be careful that you don't round round it one way or another because you want those ends to meet up and be relatively flat. Mine are a little off, so I'm going to see if I can fix that. Alright everyone, so I overgapped this a little bit, which is just fine. I'd rather have it overgapped than undergapped, and it does shrink down. The cylinder does have some cone to it, um, but it's not bad. I'd say it's, I think it's something like 23 thousandths at the top, that's at the top. But as you go down, so like down there, 17 fits and I believe 18 barely fits, like barely. Uh, I did overgrind it a little bit in favor of getting rid of the face here that was a little, a shape like they're joining together like this, and instead they join together like that, so. So we do have quite a bit of variation from top to bottom of cylinder. Uh, the other cylinder was not this bad by any means. So this cylinder must be a little more wore out. Okay, so 22 doesn't fit, and then 21 barely fits, so 21 thousandths. Um, we're shooting for 17, but that's okay. It's within spec, because spec is 10 to 23, and I believe new, it's like 10 to 13 or something, and then a worn out piston, it's bigger, so not a big deal at all. Uh, so now we're going to move. I'm actually more confident with that. I should have shot for a higher number, but. Alrighty, everybody, so I wanted to check the difference in this bore here, the cylinder, so I got this type of micrometer here for bores. And it looks like it's actually not that bad. That way it's quite bad. But it's definitely got some variation to it. So it's a couple thousandths, but uh, yeah, it's enough to make a difference. Not enough to make a difference though to where it's not usable. So uh, I got all, I believe, all of the rings done. Uh, I think I gotta check one more ring. It's in my pocket. And then uh, we'll be good to put this back together. Alrighty everyone, uh, I had to take the other side off because I forgot to clock the piston ring. So I had to do that. Uh, when you clock piston rings you don't want them on the thrust faces of the piston. Uh, so in this case since it's flat these two are the thrust faces and where the pin is is not. Uh, I also divided the oil rings in like they're both lined up right here. Uh, I did slightly lubricate the inside of the cylinder because I don't like having no lubrication on the cylinder. I, I just I don't feel like that's a great idea for first startup. An engine always has lubrication. Uh, so especially the piston. Uh, so I'm gonna go get this thing back in here. The way you have to put these in is you have to put the piston in the cylinder and you have to back it up to where the wrist pin is showing like this. Uh, and then you have to put this on. I'll show you guys uh, how to do that. So.
recording that. Obviously the valves are being pushed on a little bit, so it's gonna have some spring back, but I'm gonna go ahead and run all these nuts on. I'm actually gonna do that cylinder and then this cylinder. I'm not gonna record that. Uh, I'm gonna get them pretty tight. I'm gonna go from the inside out. I can't find the spec and you can't really get a torque wrench in here, so uh, I'm gonna do these, 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 these. I'll probably do it in two steps, maybe three. Uh, and maybe let it sit for a little bit and then come back and do it again. So I'll catch you guys when that is done All right everyone, so the mower is back together in terms of pistons my hair is crazy It's kind of getting hot out here, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the exhaust white because I don't really have any other color I mean I have black, but it's in a giant can and I don't want to waste it on that exhaust so uh, I'm gonna do that I'm gonna get everything back together. You guys really don't need to see it. I'll talk about it like I normally do I'll probably do a time lapse of me throwing everything back on because I have this giant box here of stuff that has to go back on. So, uh, pistons all went in fine, tighten everything down, and uh, yeah, we'll keep going. Oh, I had to take the exhaust off because I have to clean the exhaust gasket. Um, I should have done that with the head off or the cylinder off, but whatever. So, I'm gonna get all that done, and you guys will get to see that now. Okay, figured I'd show you all this real quick. Got the valve covers here and here. That's driver side, this is passenger side. This one's different than the driver side. This has two gaskets. One that mounts this, or that seals this to this, and then there's one here. Um, looking on the back of this, the outline of dirt, this is how it goes. So this flapper right here is like an emissions rebreather thing. That helps it seal right there. And then this and this go over that and there's a part that runs from that hole the big hole to the carburetor so and then the other one's just a flat guy all right ladies and gentlemen i was supposed to have a time lapse you saw like maybe one tenth of it i didn't record any of it i forgot to press record i didn't really want to motors back together a whole bunch of 3 8 7 16 stuff and a whole bunch of shielding um i'll show you guys obviously like give you a close-up but I got fuel in it, battery I believe is charged, uh, I shorted a wrench out on it or the ratchet so I guess there ain't nothing to it but to turn it on and see what happens. So I'm going to put you guys on the tripod, if it does start I'm going to let it run for probably about 10 minutes if nothing happens so we'll see how it goes. Let's see if it'll do it.
come over here and hold this leg. Uh, hold on a sec. Uh, yeah, can you hold it like that? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! <clears throat> a bad idea <laughs> right next to the exhaust um. ah my finger <laughs> Woo! you ever do that be careful your eyes don't do that just don't do it actually don't blow into an exhaust or don't blow into an exhaust and don't blow into a gas tank don't do either. My eye is unhappy from the gas fumes. Alone, just the gas fumes. Okay. I got some super old gas here. I'm gonna see if it'll run on that, so. It's not supposed to rev out. Not supposed to rev out. Not supposed to rev out. <laughs> What's happening? Why? You know what? Oh, I forgot we need another spring. I think we need a spring that goes from... Yeah, 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 because this thing had that spring break. Okay, everybody, we continue on. Got a spring on there, hopefully it works. Here we go. put a whole bunch of oil in the cylinders like I said before because I was afraid of just what happened which was that it would instantly rev out and I would instantly wear the rings or do something real bad. Also the inside of the exhaust has a whole bunch of water in it because I washed it out when it was playing. So.
seems simple enough. You know what it, I, what? Can I look at that real quick? One of the options is this thing maybe slid in too far and it needs to come out towards the end of the shaft. I think, no, they're supposed to be. All right. Okay, let's see if it runs away or not here. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna take a little break. I'll outro later. Gotta get a thumbnail. I'd say it's good to go. Rings are probably broken. Uh, so, definitely don't want to. The reason I hold the rings, perfect example. I started that up and it was at 3,600 RPM. That little bit of oil could have saved the ring's life just then. Probably did because there's no smoke. Before, this thing was like chooching, like a chooch of smoke. It was not. It was way, way worse. So, uh, success. New rings installed. Good to go. Everything sounds fine. It clitter clatters. It could use some thicker oil. Uh, but I'm taking a break because I've been literally in the sun for hours. So, I'm tired. Catch you guys in a little bit. <sighs> Alrighty, everyone. Well, that does it for this video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed. I did get this shield on because uh, it was getting a little hot. Uh, the intake was and stuff like that. But uh, next time you see this, alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So in the next video, the engine is done as far as we're concerned. Uh, obviously, I'll do a finale, mowing, doing something, or showing it off here. Uh, but next video, this will all be done. Hood will be on it. Uh, we got to do the 
pull, the belt to the transmission is oversized uh, and it's really loose and it's causing it to slip off and do some weird stuff and it's also not quite right it's kind of angled funky uh, and then we need to do a drive pulley off the electric clutch to the deck and we also need to service the deck uh, and then we also need a tire and other than that this is going to be ready to go so hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, if you did drop a like helps out a lot and if you really liked it consider subscribing other than that may the lord jesus bless you watch over you in all your ways in this crazy world my name's tyler Thank you for watching. Peace out. God bless.